What's up guys, welcome back to Everything Engineering and today we're going to be studying numerical analysis and we're going to be doing a, an example on the bisection method which is basically just an iterative process of solving for a zero of a given function. So first things first, we're going to check out our function given f of x equals x cubed over 2 plus 10 and our lower limit is going to be in minus 3 and our upper limit is going to be 0 and those are going to be given. So we know that there will be a 0 between minus 3 and zero. So, to start these problems off, first thing we've got to find a midpoint between our limits. Use that as a first iterative process to find out if our zero is going to be before or going to be after our midpoint. So, so we know that our midpoint is going to be at x equals minus 1.5. I'm not going to complete this yet because we need to now find out if this function is going to cross left of the negative 1.5 or right of the negative 1.5. So in order to do that we need to do a couple checks. But first let's evaluate our function values at minus 3 and at x equals 0. <coughs> so now we have our function values minus 3.5 and minus 3 and 10. Now where is it going to cross? So we need to perform this check. We want to take our value at x equals minus 3, multiply it by our value at x equals 0, and this shows that this is going to be negative. So if it's negative, that means that there will be a crossing from the interval minus 3 to negative 1.5. But where it is, we're not sure yet. But now we know that this test has proven that it's going to look something like this. And this is a rough drawing, but we know that the, this is a rough drawing, but we do know that because of this definition, we will cross between negative 3 and negative 1.5. <coughs> so now let's do our second iteration. So the second iteration, because we've said that we will cross between negative 3 and negative 1.5, that's going to be our new bracket here. So now we need to find a new midpoint. So the new midpoint is going to be at negative 2.25. And just like before, now we need to determine whether it's going to cross on the right side of negative 2.25 or on the left side of negative 2.25. So similarly, all we need to do is calculate the function value at negative 2.25. Okay, so now we have a positive value when x equals negative 2.25. So now we want to check the value of our function at our new point of negative 1.5 that we calculated as the previous midpoint. Okay, so now we can see that both of these are positive, meaning that if our function goes along from negative 2.25 to negative 1.5, it's not going to cross 0 because we have two positive values. So now that shows us that our function has to cross over on the left side of negative 2.25. And then we can show that our check works again for this iteration. So we have negative 2.25 times f of negative 3. Negative and a positive, so that is going to be less than 0. So that works. All right, so now we need to do our third iteration. All right, so for the third iteration, like the last one, we need to consider our new interval, negative 3 to negative 2.25. And 
calculate our midpoint number three. Okay, so to visualize this, we had our negative three, negative 2.25, which was our x72. This is our x lower, so now we've just calculated our xm3. And we need to find out whether the function is going to cross over in this interval or if it's going to cross over in this interval. So, like we did before, let's calculate our function values at our new midpoint. And from above, we know that the function value at negative 2.25 So you can see that these are two positive numbers. So if we multiply these together, doing our, our check, we're gonna get a positive value. So that means that our interval does not lie between here. It's gonna be in here somewhere. Less than zero, good. Okay, so now, we're getting pretty close here to our correct interval, so now we can just perform the error check and find out what how big of our approximated error would be. And you know that that just equals xm new hold over. So in this case, our xm new was negative 2.625, and the old was. 2.25 take the absolute times by 100% and that'll give us roughly 14.3% so that's not really that good you want to get it probably below 5% so let's just do one more iteration it's going to be from minus 3 again to point 65. So what does this look like? Just like before, minus 3, minus 2.625. And this is going to be, so 2.8125 is our new midpoint. Now let's find out if it's in the left of the new midpoint or the right of new midpoint. So we need to calculate our function value at negative 2.8125 and see what we get. Negative 1.123. Okay, so now we've got a negative value. So that is interesting because we, if you remember, our function at negative 3 is equal to negative 3.5. So now we know that it can't be in this integral, or in this interval. It has to be in this interval. Let's just double check. So if you recall, the value at negative 2.625 is 0 0.9561. Therefore, if we have 0. 9561 times negative 1.123, which is less than zero. So that's good. So that just confirmed that it's going to be on the right hand side of our interval. So minus 3 minus 2.625. So we know the function will come up, we know the function will come up something like this. And it's going to be on the right hand side of our midpoint number four. xr is equal to root, and it's going to lie between minus 2.8125 and 2. 6, 2, 5. Now we 
can look at our significant digits and round this up to keep it at four sig figs. We want to check the associated error with that. So we can look at negative 2.813 minus 2.625. Six point six eight percent, which is it's a little bit better. It's reasonable. One more iteration would have done it better, but I guess I, you guys get the idea. So this would be your final answer, or depending on the formation of the question. But in this case, we want our root x to be between this range, and we are with an uh, approximate estimate of six point six eight percent. So that's decent. <clears throat> so just to recap here, we've looked at our function, plugged in all of our root values given, um, we've solved for those values, and we've done our conventional check, looking at the two values, multiplying by each other, and uh, if the multiple, multiplication of the two function at those values is less than zero, then we know that it's going to be between that interval, because we need a change in sign going from left to right. It has to cross over and therefore this multiplication check must be true. So it was true for the intervals that we discussed and we now we found xr which is the root of the function between the given intervals of negative 2.813 and negative 2.625 with an associated error of 6.68%. So that is the bisection method of the numerical analysis. So thanks for watching. If you like my videos, like and share with your friends, and also visit my website. Visit my website at everythingeng.com and connect with me on LinkedIn. Search Blake Tavian.